I have returned uh, feeling motivated and energized. I was motivated and energized before, but I'm now even more motivated and more energized uh, in relation to the following observations I would make from our trip. First, uh, my impression of London is that it has a much more obvious get things done uh, mentality. They say yes to ambitious projects and find ways to accomplish them, whereas too often we almost seem to find ways to say no, um, and that needs to change. It just needs to change. It's even the discourse of our debates uh, oftentimes is predicated on the things that are negative and things that can't be done or might be impossible, whereas they just say, no, we're going to do this because we have to do it to build a great city. Secondly, saying yes to big city building projects often involves over there, I would say almost without exception, a robust role for the private sector. For example, the new, uh, brand new uh, Canary Wharf Crossrail Station, completed early and completed under budget, was developed through a significant partnership with the private sector. Similarly, their most successful concentrations of tech startups and incubators have come about due to private sector investment and encouragement. I will be increasingly looking at this as a way to build momentum for Toronto's priority projects and get things done. Thirdly, in London, their transit development is continuous. Mayor Johnson was already talking with us enthusiastically about Crossrail 2 before Crossrail 1 is even completed. So I come from London with a determination to build Smart Track reinvigorated. The use of existing rail corridors to connect people to opportunity and increase capacity on existing transit is embraced over there and I intend to see that it is here as well. I also intend to work with Council to establish our priority list of next projects here in Toronto. If you look right now, there is no official place where everybody has agreed on what the next projects are to follow the Scarborough subway and Smart Track. And I think we need clarity and focus on what the next projects are going to be because we shouldn't be waiting to get started on planning and, and getting the money and, and all of those things. I think some of this will be easier in light of the committed partnership we now have uh, set out by all parties in the recent election, including uh, the soon-to-be Liberal government. Fourthly. Transit stations cannot and should not be viewed any longer as single-purpose entities. In London, an increasing number of stations sit at the centre of more complex retail, commercial and residential developments. They are not simply ladders down to a platform, but they are instead community hubs. And this also produces significant private sector investment in transit, which eases the burden on taxpayers. Fifthly. If we want the United Kingdom to remain one of our biggest sources of investment, which they continue to be to this day, we're going to have to sell ourselves. Our city is competing globally for investment, and so we'll need to, to, to play a role, all of us, in telling our story. That's part of the reason why these trips have to take place, not just to the UK, but to other countries as well. I can assure you there are all kinds of people in places like London telling their story and competing for exactly the same investment and jobs that we need here in Toronto and that we can lay claim to in terms of all the qualities and attributes that our city has. And that means having people from Toronto officials, including political officials, public servants, business leaders, academics and members of our cultural communities out there selling this city. It's one of the best investments we could make carefully done. Sixthly, I was also struck by the very ambitious and, and creative design of the new buildings which are being incorporated into the London skyline. It's a particular challenge there because, of course, of the history of London, but they have a lot, a lot of new buildings going up. In fact, it may be the place I've seen the most cranes uh, that I've been aside from Toronto. And I look forward uh, to working with our chief planner, Jennifer Keysmat and others to see that we can find an even better way to develop our city with ambition and creativity and vision. I think our skyline, uh, which is exciting in terms of how it's growing and changing, uh, should inspire us uh, and should give us more ambition to do great things. And I think future generations will thank us if we challenge ourselves even more uh, to think differently, as clearly they have done uh, in the City of London. And so before I turn it over to C Councillor Thompson to say a few words, which will focus a bit more on the technology piece, I want to say that I believe this trip achieved all of its objectives and I believe it will lead to more interest and investment in Toronto. It has also strengthened my resolve to get on with transformative initiatives like Smart Track that will make our city even greater on the world stage and allow us to, to tell an even better story uh, about our city, already a good story. Uh, Councillor Thompson, I was very pleased uh, to have with me in all of the meetings that we had, and so he will bring you uh, uh, some of his own perspective on what we did and what we saw while we were there.